I'll tell you an example. When I was young, I thought I was a girl. When I was a little boy, I'll never forget it. I said to my, I said to my dad, I went up to my dad, and I said, hey, dad, I think, I really feel like I'm a, a, a girl. And he said, wait, I thought you had a cock. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you got me. I only tell you that so you understand how hateful we were back then. <laughs> My father was hateful. He also beat Hitler, but people are complicated. <laughs> Filthy pig of a father. <laughs> I was 
whatever I gave people couldn't be married when I was a little kid. I go, I don't get it. So I'm better than everybody. <laughs> That's what makes a person good. Nowadays. Man, I got to change my act and shit because you got to be woke. <laughs> woke up. Yeah, we flew in from, uh, from Vegas. It was so fucking scary. Oh, I was going to tell you about the, yeah, the stewardess came out. <laughs> flight attendant. Flight attendant. <laughs> so the flight attendant says to you, now, if you go, uh, uh, if the plane crashes, uh, you're right beside the emergency exit. So would you mind like letting other people out and kind of helping out? And then you go, yes, I will do that. <laughs> I was going to ask you if I could do that. That's the funny thing. <laughs> it's just me. I was after you. The extra one and a half inches of leg and well worth it. After you, man. <laughs> Black, blue smoke racing down the two spots. <laughs> of course, in real life, I'd be kicking my mouth. Get the fuck, you old whore. You got a full life. I used to be on the TV. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> they just try to make you feel better. You know? I never heard this one. I guess I, I blank out or something. I never listened. But they say now, they go, if the, the oxygen mask comes down, make sure to put it on your own self before you put it on your little child. And I was like, God damn, that was my plan. You have to fucking block it. <laughs> but they obviously just do it to make you feel better, you know. Yes, you know what your seat is good for sitting on, but you know it's also a boat. <laughs> it's good as a boat. And you try it off. But you ever turn on a TV and it goes, Hey, listen, a plane crashed in the Pacific today, but don't worry about it. Everybody floating around. around the world. <laughs> they were listening to the ladies. <laughs> Just the thing to make you feel. And same with the, the emergency exit row, you know? It don't matter on account of that plane goes down 900 miles an hour. First of all, the location of that fucking window is going to be changing. <laughs> But secondly, you vaporize. <laughs> but they show pictures. They'll take a camera and just put it on the plane because they would never do with a car accident, with a plane accident. You go, God damn, I don't see any person. <laughs> because there are none. It's just a plane load of stuff. That's all it is. Ashes to ashes. Stuff to stuff. <laughs> And so they go on and go, God damn, a lot of stuff in this plant. Holy crap. <laughs> we can't call it stuff. Call it remains. I have to <laughs> Now, the, the three people that have met this uh, horrific end, they have loved ones, you know? And the loved ones always want the remains, you know? To, for some closure, you know what I mean? They're like, God damn, I can't get to sleep ever since... Billy died in that plane crash. That's all I can think of. If only I could see him. <laughs> if only I could imprint that image on my mind. And every night before I went to sleep, I just think of that. Finally, I'd have this whole thing made. <laughs> Hey, you guys, it's not like you're going to get your love. I mean, it's not, you know, they don't go and go, look, it's the strawberry blonde. They're like, that reminds me of Agnes over there. Didn't you get her thigh going early? Okay, let's reconstruct. <laughs> they got no time. They go, come on, man, let's move. The daylight's burning. Hey, hey, listen, man. Uh, uh, I just found an ID card here, so 
says, no, I'm not done. 190 pounds. Shuttle 190 pounds of stuff into a bag. <laughs> write Norm on the side. And send it to his mother. His mother goes, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Then my mother and dad said, ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, American Airlines ain't so bad after <laughs> Jeez, I don't remember Norm having three eyeballs. <laughs>
just in the same way that the fucking hell of the news has taken away all my empathy and all my feel of despair. Porn pornography has, has taken my joy from me. I can no longer just lie down on top of a lady. Because I've seen all this crazy shit. Turns it bad. I stopped it, man. Because at the, at the end, I was like, ah, I could always find something more. You know, that's the problem. You need more. Just like any addiction, right? You gotta get more. This <sighs> <laughs> one so can only take eight cops in her ass. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> You're gonna be in the crew, why are you in the fucking business in the first place, man? Stupid. <laughs> but I could have said imbecile. 
moron. Remember when you were a kid and you'd see, they show you what that was, the actual meaning to it, like imbecile, 80 to 90 IQ, something like that. Moron, 70 to 80, everything, you know what I mean? Mean cow poop. You know how I do it right now, you know? But they don't like me as they read to And what about context? The guy didn't mention the context in which I said. Here, this was what, this was, I'll tell you the context. The, the, I remember the line. It was, I love retards. <laughs> Is that worse than, you know I fucking hate worse than anybody? I mentally challenge people. <laughs> you can't stand African Americans, they make me sick. <laughs> so context, God, I need some. I love you, North! I love you too, God. It's our only hope. It's our only hope, God, I love. I'm sniffling a lot, and I feel, I get, I feel paranoid when I sniffle because I think you guys will think I'm on cocaine. <laughs> and also I'm paranoid from the cocaine. <laughs> but together, I'm really very paranoid. I'm not for myself. But one of you underneath your seat. I was thinking this with, uh, with uh, cocaine or crack, you know. That homeless people, you know, which I have always been um, cruel. It's not cruel. Yeah, it's cruel. <laughs> cruel to by dismissing them. You know what I mean? Like, I got a homeless guy who lives next door to me. I mean, I got an apartment, but. <laughs> Just a coin flip. You know, I have an apartment. He has. Always lying down. That's the other difference. He's always horizontal. And I'm vertical and show that. But I'll walk by this motherfucker, right? And uh, he'll be like, hey, you got any spare change? I go, I got no fucking spare change. Dollars falling out my pocket. He's like, what about the dollars? I'm like, fuck it. Hey, they're for licorice. Just fucking get out of here. Why don't you get a job? What do you think of that? Have you ever heard of more retarded than this? <laughs> Why you get a job? I hear down at the city hall, they're looking for guys who piss and shit their pants on the top. <laughs> and uh, scream about John D. Rockefeller at the top of the box. You'd be perfect, I tell you. It's absurd. <laughs> but uh, it was just a uh, Selfish thing for me, but I can no, I couldn't pass them anymore. Because you know when you pass them, you've all done this. You know, you pass them and you're with your friend, and uh, you're like, yeah, get a cheese sandwich and you're like, please, sir. First of all, they're the most polite people ever. I don't know. Who calls you sir in real life? Oh, my good sir, chief. I like when people call me chief. I, I pretend I don't hear. Chief, could you help me, man? I'm like, anyway, Chief, how much have my buddy? And meanwhile, I feel the like evil that's coming up my belly. I don't feel good. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just carry some money with me. Hundred dollar bills. And every time I meet my motherfuckers, I give them a hundred dollar Just one per day. I mean, per person. But anyways, I've done this for the past five years. I even spent like $5,200. It was the best $5,200 I ever spent because that evil shit. My mother should say, you don't want to give them money on account they'll go buy a crown with the money. But first of all, if you give a person money, that's their money. They do whatever the fuck they want with it. That's how it works. <laughs> you know, I mean, imagine you had a job and you're fucking, you got the grocery store and you're it. Well, you use that money. Right? <laughs> Just can't get some beef around it. 
And when I want to check out that stove, it's not oh, okay. No, that's not how it works. He uses the run of the fucking one. That's what my mother said. She said, they'll, they'll spend it on crap. Don't do it. The, the compassionate thing to do is to give them food. You know what I mean? Like a sandwich. And I tried that, man. Let me tell you something. Go up to a, a homeless guy who's horizontal, lying. You put a sandwich on his chest. And then he's like, hey, thanks, buddy. This will change everything. Appreciate it. It's a sandwich. <laughs> but crap. Stand-up comedy 
is the most important thing in the whole world. There's a fucking problem right now. <laughs> because stand-up comedy is just a bunch of shit. <laughs> so, these guys get in and then they write articles. Now, you gotta remember, the guy that's writing the article thinks stand-up comedy is the most important thing in the world. So that's why they would write articles about the stand-up comic is today's philosopher. Now that's horseshit. <laughs> because there are modern day philosophers <laughs> who I would say are the modern day philosophers. <laughs> you imagine if you're a modern day philosopher, a fucking genius that knows every philosophical. <laughs> and you read a thing going, God yeah, damn, I thought I was maybe one of the best. But it turns out this Bill Maher fella, he got all figured out. God damn, I can't follow him. No, they're not important. But to the see to the person that thinks stand-up comedy is so important, they go, oh, they tell the truth. That's the stand-up comic's job, to tell the truth. And uh, any good stand-up comic will tell you that the job of a stand-up comic is to lie. <laughs> but they won. So I wrote some woke jokes. Yeah. 
got to do it. Can't take it any longer. Where are the corpses? I'm like, oh, the corpses. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what happened to that corpse. There's a whole bunch of mountains over there behind the snowman. Probably a lot of meat on them if he's still there.
Well, you got to understand the woke joke says, laughter is not the point. <laughs> <coughs> I'm one of these old, irrelevant retards. <laughs> yeah, so in my special, I said, I love retards. And I'm, I'm fucking on my special when I stand up. I said, I love retards. Oh, that wasn't enough for them. Oh, still <laughs> This is why I love retards, I'm just saying. <laughs> and this is why I call them retards, or mentally retarded, because I understand that word. Retarded means... It means to be arrested at a certain point of your development. No insult at all. I could say Down syndrome, but I don't want people to think I'm a doctor. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah, I come to me, hey, come on, can you hit my knee with a hammer? I'm not a doctor. Can you believe that still happens? Look at that one. You went to your GPs. All right, I hit your knee with a hammer. So you hit your knee with a hammer, yeah, my knee! And my dad's like, excellent, excellent. Good for you. Exactly how you should react when your knee is struck by a hammer. Your legs are now paralyzed. Hey, that's what I was trying. So this was the bit. I got to tell you the bit. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> this is a joke I couldn't do today. <laughs> now, I said, the reason I love retail is because they're happy. And happiness is the only thing we want. You know what I mean? Don't we all want happiness? But when do you ever get it? Yeah, never. Like, once in a while, most of your life is like, uh, uh, that. once in a while you get happy. Like me, and the longer you live, the more unhappy. Like, I'll be happy in the morning, I guess because that's when hope is, you know? So, I'll wake up, go, ah, god damn, there's my temper pillow. That's the best purchase I ever made. Looked at the mirror. I don't ever really looked at the mirror. Oh. And I'm not talking physically, but you just look at the mirror at your own two eyes, and you're like, ah. It's me. <laughs> at that point, I would love to have my retired friend go, I like bananas. <laughs> they're yellow. Can't be embraced, they're yellow. Mr. 
picture of uh, something that looks goldish, you know, and you're thrilled. Like, ah, gold, gold, I tell you. And uh, I think that's what life is. <laughs> Now you gotta remember, 
Comedy has very little to do with laughter. <laughs> right now, folks, in this country, we have got kids, and I, I don't care what stripe you are, Republican, Democrat, we all have children, and we all know what the love of a child is. And this is not who we are as Americans, because I don't know if you know what's happening at the, at the south of the border, but right now, we have got children, some of them, as young as two or three, being ripped from the arms the people who paid good money to rent them for the border crisis. <laughs> that is not who we are as Americans. If you rent the kid from the parents or from the cartel, You should get to keep that kid until you cross. A deal's a deal. It's a woke joke. I'm on the right side of the issue. Which is important. Give me another one. What really frightens me, folks, and I can't go to sleep and I think it, is what would happen if terrorists got hold of a dirty bomb and detonated it over a large American city? And 30 or 40 million Americans died on the spot and later an agonizing death from the radiation. How tragic would that be? Because could you imagine the backlash against the innocent Muslims in this country. It would be absolutely horrific. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me shave my head sad. It makes my Now, when it comes to real issues, I, I don't have that many opinions. I am uh, very, very much against abortion. And uh, that's not for reasons you might think, you know? Some people, when you say something, they immediately think of other things. But I, I'm not against abortion because I, I feel that, that that's a, a, a child, you know? It's just a goop, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what I believe. And I don't really believe in the sanctity of uh, the baby's life anyway. And I don't think that's human life. I don't know what kind of life it is, but it's certainly not human. <laughs> the only reason that I am against abortion is I am against a woman's right to control her reproductive system. <laughs> I agree with that. Believe it, 
they boo. Third man tired of child, you're the best out of the Yeah, you're better than me. Kids are happy. The women aren't children. The women are adults. Hey, you see the one up there. This one has me laughing. When women try to be equal to men by taking out men's Worst fucking traits. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I see, I, I don't watch much movies, but I saw this movie, uh, it was all women, it was all gross out of women. I was like, wait, women don't like gross out of women. And, uh, and uh, I guess it sounds like, oh, yes, we do. We're just like men, you know. <laughs> Chippendales, this is the perfect example. I don't know if you've ever seen Chippendales. I've seen like on Entertainment Weekly or something. I'll show you Chippendales. Always the same thing, right? The guy comes out and he's got like a fireman outfit. All the ladies like, woo! We're just like men. Look at this magic. And uh, I yourself in a character. <laughs> and I love that women think that's what a guy's strip club is. Oh, yeah. You're a man's strip club, just guys. <laughs> it's not the same, but I'm wrong. <laughs> and it's not like these women are like, oh, oh, did you see what uh, Bertha did? She went back, right? Uh, and for an extra $200, you can have a bottle of champagne and the fireman jizzes all over your face. What are you doing? Charlotte would get a kick out of that. That's so fucking nonsense. <laughs> and at one time, I said, I think women are superior to men because women can have children. And the fucking women hated my guts for that. I was like, I thought they'd be complimented, you know? Because. But think about this, right? A woman can create life. Create life, you know? What can a man do, you know? Eat some catch hockey and watch sports in? <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> and what, what do these women need uh, to perform this alchemic mirror? A dog. You know how hard it is to give a dog to come to a guy sometime. You're like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> hey, I was doing that, god damn it. <laughs> no, I never said it was funny, never once. <laughs> or you humbly laugh at that, whatever you want. The point is, it's all for now. There's nobody can do anything. Now, if I was a woman, that's all I could do. I have kids. That's what, that's what I would have when I said. But I would, that's what I would do, you know? I would, and I would rub guys' noses in, you know? Like I'd be at a party, go, hey, Phil, what do you do for a living again? You know what I do, Shirley. I play Shirley in this. Ah, you know, you know what I do, Shirley. I work down at an Anderson's bank, you know? And, uh, of course, he doesn't own the bank, old man Amber as he does, but as you know, Anderson's lately, you know. Anyways, uh, the point is this. Uh, oh, uh, uh, sorry, I, I don't mean to uh, interrupt you, John, but um, I'm creating life right now. <laughs> yes, creating life. Uh, human life, the highest form of life. I've done it twice before, and I'm creating life now. Um, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> but basically, my job is, uh, at Abernathy, and now Anderson, 
Abernathy would give me a pile of papers by the end of it. And if I could get that file down to about that by the end of the day, by God, that was good. And sometimes I'd get it down to about that, and that's what made me uh, next in line. So I thought before Anderson showed up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that last part. You remember when I was saying I was creating life while I was talking to you? I don't know if you can change your mind around this, but the life I was creating I was to have the corner eyes. <laughs> Abernathy and I had that many lunch. Sure, my God. I had lunches with that. And promises were made. But that day that Anderson showed up, I knew.
time in this country we discuss racism, honestly and humbly. Let's start. I'm not racist. What about you? Me neither. <laughs> real honest, though. America is racist, except these motherfuckers in the studio. I'd like it. was like, okay, let's talk about racism in this country, because it's a like me, I'm afraid of guys, but god damn, man, those black guys. You got everybody you <laughs> And they you gotta leave the show now and never come back. When we said honestly, we didn't really mean honestly. <laughs> we meant say that you like every person. <laughs> That's how we get to the bottom. It's the only way we can change. This is we all say we're not racist. <laughs> Believe all women, you hear that? Tough. Most retarded fucking. Have I heard some retarded things in my life? But believe all women? Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> I mean, I've never met a woman that's lied, but I, I have to feel that some have. I've never known a woman to lie, and I've talked to women, and they've all said, oh no, women never lie. <laughs> Believe all oh, women. In the court of public opinion, that's the court thing. Well, you gotta present the guy innocent. Well, you do, maybe in the real court, but not in the court of public action. <laughs> Leave all that. I remember when I was a kid, the most beloved book when I was a child, still is. It's called uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. You studied To Kill a Mockingbird, you know this story? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful story. So, anyway, for you, this no, it's about this guy, Tom, who's an African American. And uh, he is accused of raping a white woman. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the jury, the jury comes, and you know, they're all woke. <laughs> and the woman said, He raped me. So they believe her. <laughs> and uh, he goes away. And then he's in a prison, you see. And then uh, Atticus Finch, where we played that, this guy's not woke at all. <laughs> Standing in front of the jail. And who shows up? The court of public opinion. And they go, let's get that fucking lynch on, you know? And where we played this unwoke motherfucker. He's like, nah. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. The court of public opinion is fucking shit. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's why we have a court of law to stop the fucking court of public opinion. And the reason is this: if you commit a crime, right? The entire you ever hear about it? It's like, and now let's hear the state of. Uh, Michigan versus Bill Johnson. You're Bill Johnson, right? Yeah? <laughs> so it's not fair. It's not fair. The state of Michigan has all kinds of money. They can do anything they want. And Bill is a fucking meth addict that sucks guys out. You get more. Money. <laughs> so you got nothing on his side. Not fair. Not fair fight. So they throw him a couple of bones, and one is you don't have to say shit. But if you don't say anything, I like, must be guilty. The other is you presume him innocent. Now, here's what happens. If you presume someone innocent, you have to presume that the accuser is lying. You are mandated by law to believe no woman. Hmm. And this is why. 
be kind of if the woman loses. She does and has a hand. Crawl space. I'm like, crawl space. 
No one mentioned no crawl space. It's as bad as the woods. And then worse and worse. Every time I write, I get some macaroni salad to write. And so there they were, in the middle of nowhere, father and son, going through a ritual as old as Abraham and Isaac. <laughs> Who do you choose? Your God and his demands or your child? And his plea is reversed. <laughs> well, Bill was a pastor, and he knew what he must do. So, one by one, he took his 12 children, and one by one, he baptized them. The baptism left them bloated. Ah, I don't want to hear this. What? It's not so good. <laughs> but I know that stories. And they have that twists. That would never work if it was like a... He was a local mess dealer. <laughs> she was a town whore. <laughs> By the way, there, is, there are things in the Me Too that are so like, for instance, slut shaming, you know? God damn, I was the head of this for so fucking long. <laughs> I remember, god damn, I was in high school, and I go, fellas, why are we shaming them again? <laughs> are we thinking this through? I mean, I, I'll tell you my fear. If we shame Alice too much, she might stop being a slut. <laughs> Instead of shaming them, we put her on our shoulders and walk around. <laughs> For she's a child, you know? <laughs> I love sluts. <laughs> I remember in high school, that I was the coolest girl, was a slut. Now I don't know what happens. I hear these stories in general. But human beings are human beings. Now it's I think it's exactly the same. Women don't like to fuck. It's nice if we pretend, but... Like, women don't got no, uh... Women don't got no sex drive. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, have you ever meet a woman with a sex drive? How fucking scary is that? You know what I mean? When you're in bed with them, like, Oh, my God! What the fuck was that? You know, like a dude or something. You know what I mean? I don't know what I am. I know that I, I believe that you are what you do, not what you think. I guess that's why I, I'm different than, than a lot of people who go, I think, therefore I am. You know? I, I say, whatever you do is what you are. I don't give a fuck what you think. I only want to see what you do. You know what I mean? And uh, so, so I was saying, what do I do? Like, in terms of sex, you have gay, that means like a person who has sex, like a gay man, that's a person who wants to have sex with uh, another man, you know? And I have nothing against that at all. I think one guy gets chipped. <laughs> one guy's having a grand you know what I mean? His, his cock is Every guy's getting fucked in the ass. Let's not pretend those are equal. Um, because as long as your cock is involved, it ain't that bad. When I was a kid, I was like, man, I'd fuck the couch. You know? I remember one night I fucked my couch. 
next day I tell my friends, hey, I fucked my couch. They were like, what? That couch over there? I'm going to stay away from my fucking couch. <laughs> and you're young and insecure, you know. <laughs> but it's not my fault, it's just guys, you know, they're not fit. They're not set up right physiologically, maybe with evolution or something. But, fact is, they got two cocks. They got plenty of cocks. It's just they got no pussy. So they got a wild and improvise. <laughs> Lesbians, on the other hand, have no cocks at all. So when it comes time to fuck, like they can do all the stuff that straight people do before they fuck. That, they're good at that. But then, when it comes time to fuck, you go, ah, we don't have a cock. <laughs> well, luckily, we have that store bought cock, you know, we can use that. I don't care for a human cock, it makes me sick. <laughs> but I do enjoy a store bought facsimile. <laughs> Not their fault, man, they just, uh, just got unlucky. Maybe they were born the wrong body. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe a gay guy should have been born in a body where his ass was a pussy. <laughs> so anyways, I was wondering what I was. You know, I haven't had sex in a long time. I thought, what, what do I fuck? I thought, my own hand. I That's what I thought. So I don't know if there's a word for it, but and I'll tell you something. It's not like I find my hand sexy. I'm like, God damn, look at that. Why don't you fucking turn around for me, huh? Right. Now, fuck you, <laughs> you only fuck your hand on account of it's a huge hole. That's why it's so hard to get out of the house. You know? I'm gonna go on a date tonight with that page girl that I met at Gap. Hands like, oh fuck you, you guy, whatever. Just shut up, man. I'm gonna go, oh, she was nice, Paige. And spelled with I, P A I G E. She's not gonna fuck you. Yes, I know, Han. Just shut up. Gotta get out of the house. I know she's not gonna fuck you. Listen, Han, you don't understand this, but I would like to go with Paige and have a nice dinner. And then maybe a time. You know what? I am not even expecting to have sex with Paige tonight. Just want to have a nice dinner. And he goes, I'll make you dinner and then I'll fuck you. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't even right. Hello, Paige. Listen, my brother died. <laughs> so I, I feel like it's bad. Hey, bye. I was thinking about it, whacking off and stuff. I was thinking this is the part of whacking off about that I can't get I can't get set in my mind because if you whack if a guy whacks off, right, he has to create a scenario in his head. A scenario of the guy with the girl and everything happens in a story. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way you can do it. But think about this. This is unreal. Right? This in your thought bubble. It's not, it's not. But you need it. Like nobody can have, nobody can be whacking off and in their thought bubble is them whacking off. <laughs> like even the guys that live on the top of the fucking mountain with a white beard and shit. Even there. And I'm only talking about men, I know women are different. Like I've asked them, what do you think about when you lay down with yourself? And they go, the wind. That's <laughs> an advanced ship. The guys are base, guys need this. And 
So what fascinates me is that this unreality that you can convince yourself is reality, and this reality that you can convince yourself is unreality, is, is something that even paranoid schizophrenics have trouble <laughs> reaching to that level, to the level where you actually produce issue Four seconds of issue that you spend the rest of your fucking life chasing. <laughs> and so what fascinates me, like I don't have a big imagination, so I can't whack off about Playboy girls or Victoria's Secrets. I've tried before, but it never works. I got my my ad here right now. Hey, come on in. Yeah, I see you're wearing your underwear, huh? Oh, yeah, well, I'll show you underwear. Hey, I don't know what I'm saying. But I'm mean all the time. Charles and I are saying, ah! Hey, underwear right now. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, why would you? <laughs> Sorry about the crack about the underwear. So I need to be able to imagine. So, anyways, there's a girl that works at a 7 Eleven four blocks away. <laughs> Not much to look at, but she likes me. She's very important to me. <laughs> you ever see a girl not that good looking? And she's like, I really think you're high. You're going, eh, it's really that bad. <laughs> Shadows that turn out to be more important than that which uh, the shadow makes. So I went to the 7 Eleven, I bought but, butter pecan ice cream, sour cream, onion chips, and she goes, I really like sour cream, onion chips too. I go, yeah. She goes, No, I really like them. And I went, I'll hit me in a And then I went home and whacked out for about two months. <laughs> She didn't even know, that's the weird part. It was horrific shit I was doing. Whenever I go to the store, I'd be in and I'd go, here's my ice cream and chips. And she'd go, yeah, 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 well, how have you been? I just took a put in the bag. Who <laughs> says we need eye contact? What's okay? Anyway, I'm fascinated with that moment when reality becomes reality and unreality becomes unreality because for five or ten minutes you're living in a space in your mind where unreality is reality and reality is unreality. And at the moment of issue, the moment after that, that is the terrifying moment. You know what I mean? Because you're doing crazy, the craziest shit. And you're like, ah, 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 and it starts like, ah, ah. So you don't want to be lost. Tough enough to get through the world, I man. Like, that's what happens when you lose your mind. <laughs> if you ever have anybody in your life that's lost their mind, or if you may be losing your mind at this moment, you realize tough enough to go through the world. <laughs> Now you're going to school, man, but 
this kid I know who went to college, psychiatrist. Maybe it's psychiatry to this kid, right? Remember one time I was at a restaurant and I was drinking a glass of milk. He goes, you know why you like that milk, right, Norm? And I said, I know it's not because I enjoy milk. <laughs> and he said, no, not at all, no. It's because uh, you miss sucking on your mother's breast. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Now you guys don't know what that is. <laughs> My mother came from, came from a generation of women that will no longer be. And many of you here have mothers, or perhaps grandmothers, that fit this image. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mother who was in the kitchen and everybody else is eating, and she's still, you know what I mean? Oh, my turnips! And, I, and, I, and she just eats us. Make sure everybody's well fed. Her eyes shine love, my mother. I've never heard utter an ironic thing in her life. Purely earnest person. And happy, you know? Happy. She'll come back. She's 85 years old. She lives beside me. She'll come back. Snarl. I. I just met the most interesting lady, funniest story, man. They go, well, she's like, she was going by a pineapple with a dollar six nine. Last week it was a dollar nineteen. Well, that's not a fucking story, old bag. I don't say that. <laughs> the point is, I would not trade places with them. And then I'm sitting there and there's a glass of milk there. After he said that, what am I supposed to do? Guzzle down the milk? <laughs> Anyways. Oh, then it took that for a time. When he when he or Right? He, he orders. You know what this guy orders? Two meatballs and a banana. Now I'm like, hey, wait a second, hold on. Just a second. What's good for the goose? Psychology. And they say that you can have repressed memories. Well, that is, is the memory is go back in your head, and then 30, 40 years pass, and then you remember, you know? It's always a bad memory. It's never, <laughs> it's never like, ah, damn, I used to like peach pies. <laughs> you got that man, peach pie. I don't even know, I never remember. It's always just the most horrific, brutal, violent, Sexual thing. Can't believe it. This is why it bothers me. Because I used to know things. And now I don't. Now I'm not sure because of all this. For instance, I used to say, like, I'd be at a party or something, and somebody would come and go, Hey, Norm, let me ask you a question. Did your uncle ever fuck your asshole? <laughs> And I would say to pride, no, he hasn't. <laughs> you knew anything at all, but Uncle Jim, you wouldn't even answer that question. Or ask that question. And I would be proud, filled with pride. <laughs> that I can no longer say. I can only say, in honesty, when confronted with that question, which I ask on a weekly basis, <laughs> all I can say is, because there's two options, right? Either my uncle didn't fuck me in the ass, or my uncle did fuck me in the ass, and I forgot. <laughs> 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 
So now I'm at a dinner party guy goes, up, hey Nora, let me ask you a question. Did your uncle ever fuck you in the ass? And I go, 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's milk, it's pure milk. I knew my advanced math degree would come in handy one day. <laughs> situations, right? My buddy, he told me, he said, the key is listening. That's what the key to conversation is. Problem is, that's what I'm best at. I can listen forever. But the problem is, that's not enough, because eventually the motherfucker stopped talking. <laughs> and they were like, oh! <sighs> I forgot to think of something to say. <laughs> you keep talking, and I swear to God, the next time you sell I love something to say so. It's not enough that you listen. You must do two things. You must listen, and then at the same time, you must. When a guy mentions anything that you know anything about, even remote, like maybe he knows, maybe he mentioned uh, Star Trek. And you go, damn, I know shit about Star Trek. Very interesting trivia things about Star Trek. Excellent. As soon as this motherfucker stops talking, I will tell him my thing about Star Trek. <laughs> so this is what peace feels like. <laughs> And sometimes you gotta change the subject because you're, you know, you're peaceful wherever you say do do And then you will say do 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 and then you look up and he's like, So then the Panama Canal, whoa, whoa! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, hey, it's very interesting what you're talking about now, but uh, hey, hey, what about uh, then? Remember that before now? You were talking about Star Trek. And uh, here's an interesting thing about Star Trek. The, uh, the spaceship on Star Trek was not actually called the Star Trek. <laughs> Public Enterprise. Okay, you talk for a while. And it's not easy. It's especially cool with the magic phone. You can talk to anybody, you know, you'd be in a fucking party. You know, have you ever hear of a fellow named uh, Pablo Picasso? In the old days, like, oh, yeah, he's a middleweight, right? Really. <laughs> but you see now, they go, hey, what are you thinking of? Have you ever hear of Pablo Picasso? Oh, of course I've heard of Pablo Picasso. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> you go to the bathroom. I imagine the phone. And uh, I studied with Picasso. And then I come back, uh, 20 minutes or so. And I go, hey, fella, listen, we're talking about the castle earlier. And I just wanted to say that uh, what I find most impressive about the castle is his paintings. <laughs> this motherfucker can paint. <laughs> and also, do you remember earlier we were talking about Al Pacino? He is an American actor. <laughs> so I love it because it means education or information, which is so powerful, is now in the hands of everybody. Not only the, the rich. You know. So I think it's really good. I think we're becoming very democratized in the world, you know. And so this is what I always think. You know they have 99 percent, one percent of this country, one percent of the people in this country have all the money. 
99% don't have shit. You know who I blame? The 99%. Because why don't we go beat the fuck out of the 1%? And take all their money. Seems relatively simple. Like, there's 1,500 people here. Now, let me not start with that. <laughs> I'm not with the 1%. Here's a white privilege. You know, this is what I believe. We are controlled by a white, what, by white men. White men own this country. White men decide what happens in this country. White men are the most privileged and richest people in this entire country. That's a problem. But here's another problem. I'm a white man. <laughs> So I'm not going to be helping. <laughs> they can hit me with a rock and shit, but I ain't hit myself with a rock, I tell you. Now I hear this woman say, I think it's time women were given power. You ever think of something so stupid? Like, say, man, it's evil when white men, you know, control all the people. You know it would be good if white women controlled all the people? Yeah, that makes sense. It's the exact same fucking thing. Are people really that retarded? Yeah, maybe they are. And yet, even though I, I don't know a goddamn thing, I feel nobody does. Nobody knows a fucking thing. You know? I remember when I was young, I was a little boy, and that's what I'll leave you with. But I often think back to this. I lived, uh, I, li I grew up on a farm, and then we moved to a small, small city. I mean, it's 100,000 people. Anyways, I was about six or seven years old, right? And I went out on my front lawn, and this is what I saw, I'll never forget this. A bus that said Carlton Place on it, number four, Carlton Place, drove up to the bus stop. At the bus stop stood four men with briefcases, right? And, and then this car was going, and the light was turning red and then green. People seemed to be in a hurry. And then I remember, as clear as day, I think, and I was looking around, I was like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, so I went to my father and I said, hey, Dad, what the fuck is going on? Here? <laughs> and then my dad said, I'm going to go get some cheese. <laughs> he misunderstood the question I was asking. <laughs> he thought I meant him, and true to his word, he showed up with a block of cheese. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is going on? And in my head, I thought, at one time, at some point in my life, in the future, somebody will come up to me. And I thought it was going to be those motherfuckers with the briefcases. They seem to know. I thought, some motherfucker briefcase in front of me. They go, what? Here's what's going on. I go, well, bad man. Well, now it all makes sense. So that's why everybody in the bus and shit. In Russian, red, that's why. Well, now everything makes sense. So then, uh, uh, now, four decades later, uh, nobody ever told me I fucking did. <laughs> and I asked you. I said, now I'll ask you guys tonight, if you have any fucking idea of what's going on, I'm telling you. Because I'm Nobody I know knows. Anarchy. I have beliefs, but I don't know. You know, everybody thinks.
thinks they're right, but think about that, right? In your heart, you think you're right, of course. In my heart, I think I'm right. But isn't that irrational? Wouldn't it be like 50-50? When you say, you know, I'm right about 50% of the shit. I'm dead wrong about the other 50%. Probably is I don't know which I'm wrong about and which I'm right about, because then I could be right about 100%. So, I don't know a fucking thing. This guy don't know a fucking thing I'm talking to. So what do you say? Shut up and watch Matlock. <laughs>